What's up, race fans, and welcome to another episode of the Casino Report. This is the podcast slash podcast that gets past the hype and gives you, the MotoGP fan, the lowdown on what's really happening in the MotoGP paddock. Well, here we are. Season 2021. This is episode 11. It's the, I'm not allowed to say a certain rider, so we'll say it's the Ben Spees slash Troy Corsa episode. Wonderful. Two, uh, two, two non-European guys. They did a little bit of stuff in MotoGP, but were pre- predominantly known for their exploits in World Superbikes. Wonderful. So we're, we're, what, three, four races in. We've had another incredible weekend of racing at Jerez last weekend. What a weekend that was. Absolutely incredible. We've got a week off coming. So I think we need it just to digest everything that's happened. Uh, so we're going to talk about everything that happened and everything that's coming up in the next few weeks. Before we do, straight over to Andrew, my wonderful co-host, my sister from another mister, the Bonnie to my Clyde, or more like, uh, I suppose it's more like the Bert to my Ernie, realistically, isn't it? Andrew, right. how, you, how you doing? <laughs> how about I be Clyde, you be Bonnie? <laughs> yeah, well, oh, no, no, I want to I be, yeah, yeah, I'll be Bonnie. Okay, yeah, why not? Uh, sure. It's 2021, I, I can do that. <laughs> You, I was going to say something about swapping last night. My husband and I posted a picture on my Facebook because um, our five-year-old it. walked in and we, we sometimes pretend to be the other parent. Like I talk really deep and he'll go, hey, Angus, it's mummy. And he said something about us swapping clothes. So I was like, all right. So we stood up in our lounge room and swapped outfits. Like he wouldn't wear my bra. Swapped outfits. The big kids walk through mm-hmm. and they're just like, what's happening? <laughs> We're like, it's okay. <laughs> Keep walking. <laughs> but Nothing to see here. Nothing to see. Anyway, um, last weekend, my ovaries exploded twice and I had tears. <laughs> Manuel's like, like mm-hmm. what? Yeah. <laughs> I, I know what, who one of the culprits was. That, that te- guy that's just behind you there, Manuel. That guy behind, shall I say now? Shall I wait until we talk about him? Oh, go on, mention him now. So at the end when he when Acosta was doing his speech and then he went, oh, no, 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 wait, wait. He said, and he pretty much just said, I really want to wish my mum happy Mother's Day and my yeah. ovaries just exploded. I was like, how well, can you we- how can you not like love this kid anymore because he's bloody talented? I, Do you know what? I didn't think he was going to do it, but he proved me wrong. <laughs> I was like, he can't yeah, possibly yeah. do it again. And yeah. then my ovaries exploded when Jack Miller cried because I and then I cried with him because that was just amazing. Um, that was an incredible weekend. And El Jefe, you're you're back from your nine hour road trip. How one? How was how was the weekend? But most importantly, how was the bike? You're on a BMW S1000 XR or GT or something, were you? Yeah, no. Uh, hi to everybody. Good to be here again. And yes, I am getting used to ride nine, eleven hours on my on a bike. So I I think I am ready to go to Australia because this is normal for you isn't it exactly ready for an enduro race manuel <laughs> only get a loaf of bread <laughs> and this time this time i wrote a bmw xr 900 oh nice yeah. Yep. yeah it's a twin it's a good bike it's a good bike very comfortable easy full of electronics you know nowadays control yeah. crews different uh, modes it's, it's absolutely ABS. Does it have the predictive braking? There's a few coming out now with, with I think a few Ducatis coming out with the, the preemptive braking as well. Look, cars have had for a few years. No, look, look, something what this uh, uh, BMW has that is very dangerous is it has a display where, where it shows the lean angles you are achieving. Oh, challenge. And, challenge. <laughs> and it registers the, the deepest lean angle and then Every time you look at this and you arrive at a roundabout, you say, okay, one, one, de- one degree more. <laughs> That's oh bad. Did you have a little hey, lights Andrew. on your arm to tell you how, if you're Andrew. touching down? Yes. You, you've been missing this for a while. I'm bringing it back just for this. That gets my face palm uh, of the week. Yes. I wanted it to come back. But look, I have to tell you that's, that's like a drug. You know, you have to take it away. Oh because my God. If you see it. If you have it on the screen, then you want a better like 34. No, oh, I don't, 36. Yeah, I, oh man, I don't know if they have them over there in Europe, Manuel, but here on some of the suburban streets, we have a um, the signs that tell you to slow down. They have a speed camera registered and they have the number on there. <laughs> yeah, you know where I'm going I'm with sorry, this. I didn't mean- they, they had to modify them a few years ago because you had hoons, as they call them here, going through these 
like city areas with lots of pedestrians as fast as they could to get the highest number and take a photo. <laughs> so they had to modify them. So it only shows up to 10 kilometers an hour above the speed limit. And then it just says, Shit. slow down. <laughs> it's a yeah, chance. So like, might, oh, yeah. Sorry. We might get sound a little bit, uh, bit out, out of the world, you know, sometimes. <laughs> yes, we are. We are. Indeed. So, yeah. So how was the, how was the weekend, mate? Did you enjoy it? A lot. You know, Jerez is one of my favorite Grand Prix. The weather there in southern Spain is, you can't imagine how good the weather is. You yeah. know, the landscape, the food, it's like paradise for us, for bikers. Oh, I was so jealous. The, ol the only thing is that there were no spectators, mm -hmm. but the rest, the races were good. The weather was good. We saw fantastic racing. We saw Jack crying. I didn't know that the mm -hmm. Aussies also cried. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. It's generally uh, got but... alcohol in it, but we do cry sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> And and there were so many things to talk about. No, we saw Mark Marquez returning. We saw Paul Espargaro oh, open yeah. the, the yeah talking the, about Honda's, lack of yes, unity. And... Is, in, is in a kind of a well, you know. They they can't get yep. out of that. We yep. saw this guy who I I have behind him, me oh, yeah. behind me here. This guy is absolutely amazing we saw the italians winning so where do you want us to start let's start uh, with that guy behind you you choose you choose moto three are we going yeah, to talk yeah. about the little we do ovary boy well, yeah <laughs> first time first time we start talking about the mini bikes right yeah exactly yes yeah. so, can i say so, one thing how pissed on. how pissed off is massia that his teammates kicking <laughs> ass <laughs> Oh my God! Yes, yes. That I, I can see that makes you really happy, doesn't it, Andrew? Even though I've got him written on the fridge that I thought he was going to win the championship this year. Yep, nice. So yeah, Manuel um, Pedro Acosta, absolutely incredible. It's officially before the most that, successful before, start before, to anyone's career. Yeah, look. Before talking about Pedro Acosta, let me let me give a present to Andra about Masia. Yeah. Okay, after yeah, the race, after the race, he was ah, because ah, he was, he was so. so Pissed off because uh, I don't know who who yeah. accommodated him. Onchu, Onchu. took him and Onchu. Darren Binder out. Yeah, Onchu in the last okay, corner. okay. And then his uh, crew chief said, hey, why do you complain? You have done the same many times. And then yes. he, his answer was, yes, but not in the last turn. Because, <laughs> you know, of course. Makes it it, it, two in a week, Andra. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god keep going you're going to be unconscious by the end of this have a concussion. oh my god that Andrew yes. was scary to watch like he, i was we were talking about i was like this is getting dangerous and i know we yeah. talk about certain but he was he was making me nervous and the next minute bang did you yeah, did well, you see it, that motor three race manuel yeah yeah and who who could not look at that you know yeah and, do you think he's gonna uh, get a penalty it, i don't know i don't think so I don't think okay. so because it was a last uh, turn uh, break, you know, with mm. I don't know how many riders, but it was something that was more or less in the script. Did any of yeah. us doubt that something like this could happen with Ochu? Something was always going to happen. Yeah, he not. Not a three every time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And if then not on you, then someone else. And then post a photo of Darren's Darren Binder's bike could have killed me because it hit me in the neck. It was like you took him out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but did you see that photo that it was with the yes. disc that he, yeah. he could got killed there, you know? Oh, it, Absolutely. Could have taken his head off, yeah, for sure. Yep. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll put it up. We'll put it up here now. There we go. So we'll, um, yeah, you can see everybody. Okay. Uh, that, that line on his neck. Oh, my God. Terrible. Yeah. So, yes, let's, 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 but let's sorry, just get to the main, sorry, main event. This, this kind of, of what he got on the neck are these kind of things that you can never expect. You know, how can yeah. somebody imagine that the disc would cut his throat? Nobody. Yeah. 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 Um, Good story for his kids. We have to very quickly give a mention to John McPhee. <laughs> that poor little prick. Did he do some Irish, like walk under an Irish ladder with a black cat or some kind He's of... He's kicked someone's cat. He's kicked a witch's cat. He really has. The poor guy. So it looks like he just got the throttle on too hard out of that corner. You know what? And... That was... 
Oh my god, that was that was so terrible. Is that four DNFs? Four? Yeah, yeah. That's... I think at that point he doesn't even need help to get out of the race. He does it <laughs> by himself. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. But let's go to Super Pedro Acosta. Yep. Look, I have to tell you something. I have been here for 25 or 26 years. I have never seen somebody like him. Never. And all my colleagues and all the people who are here for years and years say the same. Mm. All the riders, Kevin Schwanz the other day said that it's simply amazing. He has invented another way of riding bikes so even it's rossi like yeah all those people everyone, you talk about everyone. they didn't come through like this no no not everyone like no 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 ed you know the thing they, it, it's not that he wins it's how he wins how he controls what he does look the breaking in the last uh, turn on uh, no on the last lap oh. on turn six yeah oh was, my god that was impossible Impossible. It was beautiful to watch. And he just it? yeah tucked in and yeah. And the thing is that we were all we were all waiting him to do something like this because yep. we yep. knew that it was coming. Look, this guy has won the last three races. Okay, he has done four podiums in four races and the last three, three races. And you have to consider something. He has won every race in a different mode, mm. right? Remember in Los Angeles, he started 50 seconds from behind from the pit lane. Yep, mm -hmm. from the pit lane. Got in, got in the front group and won. And it was like, oh, he, they were going a bit slower in the front. So, yeah, it wasn't yeah, it was but great, anyhow, but it wasn't too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it was how he raced. Yeah. The second one was uh, he, in the second ra race, he just stayed there in the group, you know, waiting his moment. It was like a, a wolf mm -hmm. ready to yeah. attack. In the last lap, he made the moving one. Mm -hmm. Here in Spain, in Spain, instead, he turned into the protagonist of the race. I am the one who is going to lead this, and you know. So he is one in so different ways. He's uh, mm. he can do it anyhow. And the thing is, the way he does it, so easy, so different. Did you yeah. hear Mark Marquez talking about him? I'm yes, I confident. heard he was he was basically saying this is this is the kid, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he said, look, I uh, he said, because he was asked, are you following Acosta? He said, yes, of course. How wouldn't mm -hmm. I? And then he said, this guy does the things different. Mm. Mark Marquez. Then he says he will be world champion in Moto3 and he will arrive soon in MotoGP. Wow. And we'll do very, very well. Huh. Mark, Mark. Is this when Rossi grabs a coster and takes him out to the ranch <laughs> and starts doing oh, his grooming? Wow, yeah. <laughs> no, this, this kid oh. is, you know, uh, let me just a, a, a short profile. Mm. Today is 2021. At the end of 2018, because his family is very poor, let's say, okay? Mm -hmm. his, first, his father is a fisherman that goes out on the boat every night and returns in the morning. In 2018, the money they had for him to raise ran out and they said, okay. He told his son, look, uh, Pedro, we just can't afford it anymore. It, we have arrived here. Here is where we stay. He said, okay. Then he got the possibility to get to the Red Bull rookie selection. Oh, yeah. Yep. You know that there were 400 riders and then at mm -hmm. the end they choose 25. So he made it through and was chosen to race. So we are talking about 2019. So he raced in 2019, did well. So KTM and Red Bull considered, okay, let's give him another chance. He raced in 2022 and won immediately the first six races of that rookies cup. Ah, right. And we are talking about a kid of 14 years old. He was old. 14 at that time, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So immediately, obviously, the guy uh, from KTM, they saw, wow, this is a jewel. <laughs> so they put him in the best team, and this is yep. where he is. Put him in Akiyo's team. Yeah. <laughs> you know that he has been interviewed in 
all the TVs, all the radios here in Spain. And it was funny because they asked him, well, what about your friends? Tali said, no, no, I don't have friends. I just leave the house for training. Yeah. <laughs> and then he, uh, he was asked, you know, riders, they hate when it rains normally. Riders hate a wet track. He, yep. when it's raining, he says to his dad, okay, let's go training under Ooh. the rain. So right. now he is, and he's a, he's natural, you know, he's not yeah. a, a little uh, prima donna. No, he's not. And when you hear him speaking, he's, he's a so kid. grounded he's though. Kid. Like he's yeah. just so. Yeah. He's mature beyond his years. Like seriously, like I, I can't, can't think of any other way to say it. I've, you listen to him talk and it's not a 15, 16 year old kid talking. Not at all. But even like, yeah. and I noticed this with my juvenile experience in MotoGP, but, you know, you can see even the difference, like I love Raul, Raul and, you know, some of those guys that are just coming up into Moto2, but the way mm -hmm. that they ride defensively, like I think we've spoken about it where they leave themselves open a lot. Pedro yeah. seems to just have that when he was in front, you could see they could not get past him. So mm. no, no, even and, just and you can see he rides smarter. And if you watch the race, you can see that he tries during the race a lot of, he tries things, mm -hmm. he experiments. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. if I have to overtake here, I do it this way and he's ready. So we all knew, looking at the race, that nobody could outbreak him mm -hmm. in the last corner. It was impossible. The way he was breaking yeah. it at that corner, it was like, in fact, I thought that he would overtake them in the last corner. But he mm. was clever. He said, okay, there may be happen something in that last corner and yeah. I will not be able. So let's do it before and leave oh, this as the last card to play. Mm. So no, this guy is going to write a lot of golden pages in motorcycle racing. How he long is, do you think him, how long do you think it'll take him to get to MotoGP? Also, I think there's been talk about how he's so he is quite big and he's quite tall. So as he's he's still growing. Yeah, I think that uh, we we all think that look, the championship is very long. We have seen hmm. this a hundred thousand of times. Yeah. There is still 15 races to go. So anything can happen. But if things go normally, next year he will be in Moto 2. But mm -hmm. consider that he's only 16. So why hurry, you know? Yeah, yeah exactly. But they, they so, should not rush him, not at all. Yeah, yeah. And the, the good thing is that he's in the hands of the KTM Red Bull organization, you know? Yeah. They have experience and the Austrians, they are not Italians or Spaniards. So they do it with a method, you mm -hmm. know? He's got a good he, with, steady career with order, him. with order. If if it would depend on us, he would be tomorrow on the MotoGP. But again, yeah. too, it's it's about progression, isn't it? And he obviously needs to quickly move to Moto Two to keep developing and maybe sit yeah, there for a while. And Edra, he's sixteen. So yeah. Why rush? Pero, but again, you know, can yeah. well he will obviously keep learning. But how much with his skill level can he learn from racing in Moto Three for longer? No, no, no. They, think, they're a whole different. Yeah, yeah. Moto3, he's showing. He's mm. far above of the rest. Then yeah. he should go to Moto2. I, I, I tell you my, yeah, my opinion, because in Moto2, you start to work with electronics, yeah, you know, exactly. with different. You uh, work with power. a heavier bike. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And Moto2 is, without a doubt, the most competitive category mm -hmm. in MotoGP because they have almost all the same chassis, almost all yep. the same the engine. So at mm. the end there, the differences are basically in the riding. Oh, yeah. You can have Remy seat when Remy goes to MotoGP next year. Well, that seems like the natural progression, doesn't, doesn't it? It, it seems yeah. like Remy moving up into the KTM team in MotoGP um, and, and Acosta going up to Moto2 in the KTM team there. So, um, that, that, I mean... That, that would be the normal, yes, but he has a teammate that is pushing a lot as well. And yes, remember true. that yep. Remy, it's his fifth year, fifth year in mm -hmm. Moto2, while his teammate is its fourth race. Yeah. 
Yeah, and they're, so and they're both angry. having similar results. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so so let's, yeah. let's see how it, it progresses. It's very important. Mm -hmm. What yes. season has just started, you know? Yeah. And, and I think before we progress to up, up, the, up the categories, I want to put give an honourable mention to Jeremy Alcoba as well. He's, um, he, he's given up having fights with, with, uh, with, with McPhee now. Um, and, <laughs> and this week he decided to actually ride the damn motorcycle and he rode the wheels off that thing. Mm -hmm. I think at, at one point I saw him down in 16th or 17th or something and he finished on the podium. Absolutely incredible That's ride amazing. from October. Well done. Yep. Yeah. Another All Spaniard. Right. What can I say? Yeah, I know. You guys just <laughs> breathe. It. It's insane. All right. Well, in that case, I'll, I'll mention Fanati and Mino as well, the Italians. <laughs> <laughs> Even it out. <laughs> oh, well, let's, break. Let's, yeah, quick think break. Sorry, we let's just stopped and watched you. Just quickly. We did, yeah. And it's nice. <sighs> I'm having, I'm in, I'm in the red wine tonight. I'm having a, uh, what have I got? I've got a, I've got a 2009 Cab Sav from uh, somewhere South Australia, actually. So it's a Yay! nice drop. So McLaren I've got most Bell. of it here. I think, yeah, it's a McLaren Bell. Yes, yeah, so I've got most of it here, and then the rest of it's in my spaghetti bolognese that I'm making at the moment. So. <laughs> I'm drinking so, I'm drinking half soft drink, half alcoholic ginger beer, because I hadn't finished my dinner drink. Nice. Good stuff. Um, right. Moto2, just quickly. We'll, 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 we'll shoot through Moto2 and get to Moto, MotoGP. Um, Fabio Di Antonio, oh my god, what a ride! Yeah. Um, everybody was waiting for the inevitable Sam Lowe's Remy Gardner to just come over the top and, and just take over Bedzecki and Di Antonio. But to his credit, he just kept banging out those, those lap times like a metronome, absolutely mm, incredible yeah. ride. And Lowe's and Gardner clearly they didn't have the tires, it was a great ride from the Italians up front, wasn't it? And Bezecchi, I was so good to see him up there, he's a bit of a yeah. silent warrior, that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, finally I think for Bezeki returning to returning, no, starting in Jerez, a track that he knows very well, he needed a result like this because he has been yeah. the big disappointment of the start of the season. In yeah. the case of uh, Sam, I would say that this time Sam knew that he had to get to the final, you know, to yeah. the check and flag after yeah. Yeah. the previous mistakes. And Digia, like they called it in Italy, it's Digia. Yeah, yeah. Digia did an amazing race. You know that it it is it it was his only second win in the championship. Really, I didn't realize yeah. that. He wow. he had a win in Moto Three and one win. Although he has a lot of podiums, but he was mm. he has never been specially good in winning. <clears throat> and he and led for a while. I was so sure that he was going to drop the ball. I didn't think he was going to yeah. be able to stay up there. But like you said, he was just consistent lap to lap and. Fine. And DJ has a, sorry, sorry, Stu. DJ right. has a con in his contract. He has a clause <clears throat> where it says that at a certain point in the middle of the season, which I don't know which one, and he is in a certain position, he automatically will get a ride on Aprilia MotoGP next year. Ooh, what tasty! <clears throat> so that's why he's aiming Very for, nice. and he will push. We will see him pushing a lot in the first part of the season until he gets that uh, clause activated. So, act. so he needs like a certain amount of points or wins or podiums or something through the season. But there's a clause that once he gets to a certain level of success this season, then he goes to the Aprilia yeah, senior the, team. The clause, the clause considers a certain position in the championship. Nice. Okay, fantastic. That's a good incentive. Very good. He's clearly working towards it. And so, um, yeah, like you say, uh, Andrew, Bedzeki, great result from him. I, I agree with you, Manuel. I think after he had a good year two years ago um, when he was uh, when he was fighting with Luca Marini. And then last year he, he had some good results with, alongside Marini. But I, I was concerned that Marini went up a class and, and Bedzeki stayed there. And there was talk that maybe Bedzeki should have gone up as well if there was a spot. And I thought he was going to go into his shell and disappear a little bit, be, you know, we'd be a bit uh, down and disappointed. And the first few races this year, it's sort of shown that maybe he was a bit down. Um, but I, I think that 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 podium for him, again, similar to, to Digia, he managed to bang in the lap times and, and keep them consistent and um, and keep Lowe's and Gardner and Fernandez behind him. I think it was a great result for him for, and for the VR46 team. <laughs> no, I was well, saying that I spoke with somebody this morning. And I was told that um, 
Metzeki is on the list too for the VR46 team for next year, MotoGP. Of course, team. yeah. Yeah, uh, basically this, the, the idea is that that team will be Marini and Metzeki in MotoGP. Nice. It's the old Moto2 so, team coming back together. So no Valentino, if you realize. Yes, I was about to ask, or are they going to have yeah. extra bikes? <laughs> <laughs> so this is a matter for another mm. another issue. Special whole episode. Special episode. Yeah. So we will see. We will see. And and Betseki obviously is in the same position that uh, DJ and Antonio. He will have probably a clause where it says if you are third or third and best, you have a place in MotoGP. So th these are incentives for all these riders. Nice, nice, good stuff. And and Lowe's and Gardner, obviously, it was a consolidation race for both of those guys. Um, they just didn't have the pace. They didn't have the tyres on the weekend. But as, as you've rightly pointed out there, Manuel, great result for Lowe's to get on the podium and just to, just to finish the race. So even when he's not up there, he's, he's still getting points. Exactly. He's that, that makes world champions. Yeah, and, and look, I think that Lowe's and, and Remy, they are clearly pointing to the championship, so they have to be clever like they were, you know? Exactly. There are days where you can do fourth, finish fourth. Get instead the points. Of finishing, yeah, instead of finishing sitting in the gravel, you know? Yep. So this yeah. is being mature. This is mature mm -hmm. racing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Any any other highlights from Moto2 for, from you, Andrew, before we move forward? Um, I was hoping Joe Roberts was going to do better. Yeah. Yeah, and Cameron Bovier, it was disappointing. He crashed on the last lap, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I was to say something Bobier, about... Look, I, I have to tell you something. Bobier is uh, starting better than I expected. Mm -hmm. I thought that he would do uh, worse, but he's showing good pace. He's showing that the level in the Moto America Championship isn't as low as I expected, really. Yeah. He's doing a good job. And remember that Bobier also raced in the Rookies Cup some years ago. That's right, yes. yes. He did very well in the Rookies Cup. In fact, I mm. think he won. The, I have to check, but he did very well. So he knows a good part of the circuits they are going to now. Yeah. We might have to do a special episode on the Red Bull Rookies riders. Yeah. I think so. We've alluded to it a few times. It, it's yeah. I, I think we need to dig into that a little bit because it's it's a whole other universe, isn't it? That um, it's as Manuel has said before. It's a um, it, it's a conveyor belt, a factory of of talent just just coming out of there. Mm -hmm. Andrew, we should contact Billy Van Van der Van yeah, der Van der, yeah. Yeah, for that episode would be nice because he has been there, I think, for three years or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Would be interesting. Okay. I think that's a good idea. Where are right. we going to go? No GP. Let's do it. Let's talk about turn seven. <laughs> oh, turn seven. Oh, my God. No. There's people still having it's... nightmares about turn seven. I think uh, um, Alberto Puig is still having nightmares about turn seven. Yeah, turn seven. Look, it's very interesting what the rider said. Between six and turn seven, there are um, 100 meters, probably. Yep. 100 and the increase of speed from one turn to another is mm. around 120 k's. They increase yeah. the speed and acceleration. So, and it's interesting, Stu, because it's a corner where you arrive and you don't break, you just release the gas, right? You go Rolling. and then it's okay. like, and then what happens with this? You don't load as you don't break. You don't load the front. So like Manuel no going break. around the roundabouts on his back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're you right. Okay. So you accelerate, you just release. And then when you open again, as you have not. You break, don't have the front grip. Exactly. And you are so fast because now in the past, when you accelerated between those two corners, you had that front wheelie. Mm. And this. This uh, the engine power got automatically cut as you do front wheelie. Yes. On the acceleration yeah. with mm -hmm. the with the new aerodynamics and the load they got on the front. Now they just accelerate straight forward. Yeah. And I don't know. 
one of the writers said it, didn't they? They're like, we're getting too fast. Like, and that track, for example, because for me, I was just watching it going, how bloody close is that fence to the track? Like there's no there's no room mm. for them to yeah, look uh, yeah that's as you said that's what Marquez was saying yeah oh, yep yeah and it's this is a characteristic of the old European circuits you know they are they are yeah exactly and I think uh, and I, there I are no ca- escape areas you mm. you can't modify uh, the corner number seven in Jerez because no. on the other side of the fence is the corner number thirteen yeah exactly you can't do anything. And I think I heard Simon Crafer talking about tyres there as well. Um, it's the first left-hand turn for like three or four corners. And so the left-hand side of the tyre has had time to cool down on that corner as well, which which also reduces your, your grip capability. So yeah, like you say, those two things combined, it's just a recipe for disaster. Yeah, uh, but Stu, look, I, I am not an uh, assassin, but at the end, this is something that the riders have to manage. You understand? Yes. So exactly, yeah. Okay. Right to the limits. Uh, look, I probably I will get massacred, but at the end, riders have to manage the situation. The, I agree. You know, yeah. The, uh, I I always put as ah. an example the British Superbike Championship. Yes. Where the Brits race. No Cadwell Park. Oh man, some, some, yeah, Cadwell Park. Some of those tracks. And are yeah, they, they these guys heads. from MotoGP would They're never so go out, yeah. not even in a in a scooter around there. It's like the yeah. Isle of Man or something on the yeah, track. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the yeah. riders, they, it's it's okay to take care of their safety, but at the end there is any if they want really safe, they should play PlayStation. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah. I, I I agree with you 100%, Manuel. I really do. It's um, it's it's not like one or two riders have a disadvantage or an advantage. They're all riding the similar machinery, same with similar specifications and limitations on the same track. Um, they they all they all get paid a hell of a lot of money um, to to be able to ride that thing to not just the limit of the bike, but the limit of the track as well. An example that we spoke about just before we came on air is. Formula One and Monaco. Monaco outgrew, uh, oh, sorry, the cars outgrew Monaco in Formula One 20 or 30 years ago. Um, like there was there was calls for them to boycott the race and not race in Monaco anymore that long ago because the cars are simply just too fast for that track. But they continue to race there because of the historic sentiment and value of the track. And it, you're right, man. Well, it's becoming like that with some of the smaller historic tracks around Europe now with with MotoGP and your, your amazing example is Cadwell Park and British Superbikes as well those uh, those club tracks that people are racing on it's the same for everybody get on with it do god your bless, race god bless yep. the air fence mm. yeah exactly oh, yeah. that's it yeah. so no, without, talk- without the air fence there would have been a tragedy oh, in the last oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so let's, talk- let's talk about Marquez yeah yeah, talking about that corner, Marquez, he's he's looking much more normal and starting to push it a bit more after his first race of driving, riding, driving, <laughs> riding a little bit more carefully. Mm. Um, yeah, you can see him pushing the limits again. Yeah, Mark uh, arrived in Jerez with experience of Portugal, so he knew his body. You know how mm-hmm. his body yeah. was because yeah. until he rode that bike, he didn't. He could imagine I will do this, but after Portugal, he exactly felt how his body was reacting. Yeah, he knows. And that. and he, after his two crash, look for me, it was amazing. He crashed hard, really hard yeah. in to- corner seven in FP three. Yeah, that was very cool. Yeah, and you know that after a while, he started to lose the memory. He started not yeah. to know where he was, and he started not to know what was happening. That's, that's a concussion. Why, yeah, because he, he couldn't have raced. So that's why they took him to the hospital to do a pack. Yeah. Okay. His so brain he, has been shaken up too many times. Exactly. So he was at the hospital. The the tag uh, got negative. Yep. And a few minutes later, he was back on the gate on the bike to do FP four. Wow. These guys, these guys, are, yeah, these are, you know, they are done 
And then the Thinking other side of the coin, though, that just reminded me. Sorry, we we spoke about Moto Two. The other side of the coin is Jake Dixon, Jake. our good friend Jake. Yeah, he um he's he's been progressing well in his return from his wrist injury. But then in the warm up session on Sunday, he had a heavy crash. What what corner was that? Do you remember? Was that that wasn't Turn Seven, was it? I was going to say no, Eleven. I uh, yeah, I think it was around there somewhere. Yeah, but yeah, he had a heavy crash and. Same thing. He was having having issues with his with how he was feeling within himself, um, and he failed the concussion test, and so he he couldn't race. So he was um, he was not allowed to race, unfortunately, on the weekend. For those out there that follow Jake's progress, he uh, he didn't compete on the weekend, but he will be back for Le Mans. Um, but yeah, like you say, Mo, that's the other side of the coin. They've got you've got to do that concussion testing, um, and Mark managed to uh, manage to pass that test and still get on the yeah. bike. And then he jumped on the bike, finished, I think, 15th or something like this. Yep, and, uh, so his race was cons- uh, completely, how do you say, um, the grid position made his race. So he knew yeah. what kind of race he had to do. Exactly. Yes, Andrew. Oh, no, I was just going to say he crashed at um, turn seven. Oh, what, Jake yeah. did? Yeah. It was turn seven. Yep. There you go. Another example. Yeah, indeed. So yeah, that's that, that's Mark. Uh, in general, Manuel, what do you think about about Mark's um, performances and his his riding style and his the, I suppose the speed as he comes back? Do you think it's about what you're expecting to see? Look, we saw in Jerez uh, basically the same that we saw in Portugal mm-hmm. because he, at a certain point of the race he was lapping as fast as the top guys. Yeah, exactly as fast, same yeah. timing, but then he says. It's interesting because he says, look, when I really try to go that fast, I feel my energy like coming down so quickly. My my energy escapes out of me. So I can do this for some laps. And then he Mm -hmm. said, look, I tried to go fast and I was fast. And then suddenly my engine, my engine, my energy disappeared. So he said the last eight laps was like, okay, now... It's time for cruising yeah. and arriving, you know? Yeah. So uh, I think the only the, doc- the doctors had an idea of what was going to happen with Mark because we thought he was going to come back in a big style. Mark, mm. when he arrived in Jerez, his aim was to finish top five. Yep. You didn't do too yep. bad then, really. You know, so, but... Mm. And after the race, because he crashed again, he crashed twice, right? So after the race, his neck was stiff like a stick. You know, he was, you can, mm-hmm. see, you could see it. He was so painful. In fact, he tried to ride in the test they made uh, on Monday. He tried to ride, but he just completed, I think, three, four laps. Yeah, it wasn't many. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then he said that after the race, he would not touch a bike anymore until uh, two weeks time that he will start in France. So imagine he is really not feeling good. If he does exactly to like keep it, him off a bike, that is serious indeed. Yeah. And now I'm gonna tell you a big scoop about <laughs> Mark Marquez. music. About Mark Marquez. Music. Mm-hmm. Ding, dun, ding, dun, dun, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> breaking news, breaking news. Breaking, yes. You know that the doctors that uh, took care of the third uh, surgery yep. made Mark Marquez sign a contract in which Mark assumed the, the compromise. Yeah. The, oh, the risk. Uh, yep. No, no, he assumed that he would follow to the comma all right. the indication of the doctors. Right, okay, yep. On the contract. So if yep. they say between Jerez and Le Mans, you don't write anything. Then he, he has to do it legally now. Legally, because they said wow. our, how do you say, our image or our reputation. Uh, reputation? Uh, exactly, that's the yep. word. Our reputation yep. will be in uh, uh, here on the table, and yes. we don't in want your us, hands. Yeah, 
happen the same that happened with the first doctor. No yeah. opening windows in between. I was about races. to say that. Yeah. <laughs> just... That's got to be in the contract. No <laughs> opening windows. Now the, the, all the windows are automatic. With yeah. The... <laughs> yes, yeah. Full remote control. Uh, full, but yeah. you know, I, it's the first time I have heard something about that. They made it sign, mm. sign the contract. You can't That's blame crazy. them though after the first couple yeah. of episodes, right? Yeah, the, the guys, guys got form for sure. I must um, yeah, say I'm, though, I'm I'm very much enjoying him. I didn't. Real, I wasn't very happy about him coming back because I thought it would really mess up everything, as yeah. in he'd just dominate again. But he, I really like he brings something really different than anyone else. Like that real psychological, yeah, killer. He's just he's different. Yeah, Ooh. even even without him Mark. having Mark, yeah, Mark, even without yeah. him having results, you can you can yep. see there's a different aspect during practice and qualifying now, mm-hmm. can't you? The All games that, that and the, yes, the pl- exactly. yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, and, and I just I've just checked. He he finished ninth. He, he's fifteenth yep. in the championship, and he finished ninth on the weekend. Um, so yeah, so obviously we know his teammate Paul. He crashed in the same corner as well. Um, we know there's the, there's some issues, I suppose, um, or problems with the 2021 chassis with that bike. Those guys are not happy with that chassis at all. Paul is having um, all sorts of problems. He's talking about disunity in in Honda. Um, and meanwhile, on the other side of the fence over at the LCR team, you've got Packer, who started the weekend in Jerez, um, having av- well, so let's say average lap times or not good lap times, switched to his old chassis, the non-carbon insert chassis. When you and say he the immediately chassis- so yeah, that's the frame. The frame I was gonna say what, but how does the chassis impact isn't it more the motor and the electrical and all the other? How does the chassis Oh, yeah, it's a great question, Andrew. So realistically, the, the chassis of the bike um, allows allows the, the motorcycle to flex and move under the rider to, to give them an amount of feel. And, and Manuel, feel free to stop me and, and tell me if I'm talking crap here. Um, but there's, <laughs> there's, there's, there's He will. Been, he will. Oh, he will. He's not, he's not shy of that. The, there's been um, a, a, an ongoing debate over, over years and years and years about, you know, what's the optimal way to, to, to build a chassis? Um, and it changes from rider to rider. They, they want a certain amount of flex in some situations, certain amount of stiffness in other situations. Um, <laughs> how it yeah, how it carries that because basically it's it's a it's a device to carry the engine, mm-hmm. the front forks, and the rear swing arm, and the rider. You know, it, and how it does those things. Um, there's, there's millions and millions of variations, and they're always evolving those things. What Honda had in up to sort of 2019, and what they developed year on year was going really really good. Um, but then it seems that as, as marks move off to the side and they've continued to develop the chassis for, you know, other riders, as it were, a more generic chassis, there's a real problem with it and there's real challenges. So Tack has gone back to the old 2019 chassis again um, and his, his lap times are immediately faster um, and he finished fourth on the, on the, uh, on the, on the, on the grid at the end, at the end of the race. So Manuel, what do you what do you reckon with what's going on at Honda? Do you think it's simply a symptom of them um, looking for a chassis that's more rideable for all the other riders? Not well, well Stu, this has been Honda's aim for years. You know, uh, this has uh, this was what finished with Jorge Lorenzo in Honda, and if you check the the crashes of the season, Alex uh, Marquez crashed again. Right in the Again, race. Yep. Yep. Uh, Nakagami, I think, in four races he has crashed five times. Mm-hmm. Paul Espargaro is desperate. Yeah. Mark Marquez, who was riding carefully, crashed twice. Bill yeah, two crashes. And yeah. so the bike, the bike has a problem. It's really? obvious that has a problem. And going back to the 2020 chassis is mm-hmm. maybe reducing the problem, but the problem is still there. Yeah. And the, the important thing, normally, you know, uh, Honda in racing is like the Vatican. Yeah. Nobody yeah. can tell anything about Honda. Nobody yeah. speaks anything wrong about Honda because they are exactly hermetic, absolutely yeah. hermetic. Yep. So, when Polar appeared Sunday afternoon after the race, after just four races and started to bang on Honda, my eyes were like 
two mm. plates, you know, like this, big. Mm -hmm. Yep. And because he's nobody, nobody dares to criticize Honda because yeah. by contract, like Ducati has, they are not allowed to speak bad about the bikes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And he clearly absolutely loves Honda and was so proud and happy to join the team and that. get that bike. Yep. And so he's, you know, yeah. It's yes, the bad. violins, the, the famous violins. Andra. I bring in the touch. I'm here for the touchy feely stuff. Yeah, no, no, no. Don't trust anything. I, I, sa I said, Manuel, on the weekend when they showed a clip of um, Mark Marquez crying when he was trying to do his interview, and I turned yes. to Adam and I was like, Manuel, just go, that's bullshit. He's fake. Yeah. <laughs> and sure <laughs> enough. He's like, two minutes, I come back. <laughs> I will tell you something. I can't mention the name, but somebody who is in charge of communication inside the team. Mm. In fact, there are, there are two. So one got is 50% chance. No, one is oh. senior, the other one is junior, right? No right. names. Okay. The senior in Portimao told the junior guy, don't trust anything what Mark says. Yeah. Because he plays Honda. mind games 24 Honda. 7. Yeah. Of Honda. Don't because everything. Even internally. Does, yeah. He's acting. Everything yes. he does is, I know yeah. I said naughty words, is mind games. He's yeah. okay. everything. So, <laughs> let's move forward. So that's why when Paul yeah. appeared and he said things like, I don't know if I am fast or slow with the bike I have because I can't yeah. compare myself to with anybody. Yeah. Because each of us did race today with a different bike. Yeah. So am I fast or am I slow? And yeah. then he says, he says, I, I am acting like a Honda employee. Honda gives mm. me a bike and tells me ride this bike. And he mm. says, I don't know which bike I am riding. I don't know why I'm ride why I am riding this bike, which wow. is the reason why they are looking for me riding this bike. Said, as I don't know what I am riding, I can't help them. And then he says, they can't help me. And then yeah, he exactly. says, That's the I thing. can't help myself. Yeah. So it was <laughs> bam, bam, I went after. He said, Well, I feel confused. And yep. he says, and I think uh, inside the box, there is also confusion. Yeah, yeah. So I think so. Then, yeah. then I asked him, I asked him, I asked him, Paul, it looks, no, hearing you, for me, it's very clear that you don't understand the method, the working method, Honda's working method. Oh, Honda, yeah. And he said, well, I have to say that it's very different from where I come from. <laughs> and then I told him, okay, I'm not going to push more because I'm putting you in. in <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Best we leave it there for now. Exactly. So, yeah. Manuel, nice. what do you anticipate is going to happen with Honda? Obviously, something needs to give. No, look, it's not that easy. Um, uh, Monday, they had a test, mm -hmm. right? And suddenly, 24 hours later, Paul's happy. speech was, I am very happy. We did a lot yeah. of progress. Because he's been taken out the back the night before. And or, or maybe, maybe they, he has a clause where it says minus 15,000 every yeah. time you speak. Yeah. He so didn't suddenly, read that one before. They went, yeah, what? suddenly the violin started to sound in the Repsol garage again. You sound like such a journalist. But uh, look, after Paul's speech on Sunday, it was Mark's turn, right? Yeah. And I expected, because Mark is basically the Honda ambassador and he knows the company mm. very well. Yep. And I said, okay, now Mark is coming out and he will not admit what Paul says or mm -hmm. saying the opposite. But no, for my surprise, for my surprise, he didn't... Uh, stick the knife that hard, that deep, but he says things like, he said like, well, today riding behind uh, Paul, 
behind Stefan Bradel and behind mm -hmm. Sarko, I started to understand some things we have to work on, some yeah. areas. He said it more diplomatically. It, yes, and then it was the, the following sentence was the definitive one. He said, because what, what I don't want is to get lost, like yeah. we did in 2015. Yes. He said, in 2015, we got lost and it took us a long time to, to get back on the mm -hmm. right trail. He said, this is something we have to avoid, yes or yes. Yep. So basically he said the same, that there was a confusion. This mm. was the year without Mark. Yeah, that's right. And, and I think that that comment as well to me, when I heard that, I felt that that was pointed more inwards to Honda than outwards towards the media. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it he was, was he message. was always, he, yeah, he it's a could, message to uh, Honda. Stu, yeah, he could have said, well, we have to work. No, no, no. He was, he did, you know, he was not as harsh as Paul, but it said he spoke very clearly. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, that's that's Honda. That's that's one. They they clearly have a lot of uh, a lot of challenges ahead. Um, so I'm just refilling my my wine glass while I'm talking. Um, let's let let let's move to the main event. These guys. It was an Italian job. Realistically, it was the Italian job the whole weekend. You know, Moto Two, Digia on top. You had I know a Costa one in Moto Three, but you had Fanati and those guys up there as well. And then up on the podium for MotoGP, you had the Ducatis up the top. You had two Italians on the podium as well. How good were the Ducatis? We had Rossi on, the on track. We had we had we had, we had Rossi driving the bus somewhere, home, maybe somewhere somewhere on the track. <laughs> and he was only point point seven seconds off um, off the podium, guys, at one point. And he's like down in fifteenth or sixteenth or seventeenth or something. That just does show how close it is, seriously. But um, but but Valet, I, I loved you to bits, mate. You are an, you are literally a living legend, but please retire. Please let someone else have a go. It's not your train set. I don't know how he's gonna go now. That's another episode too. Yeah, that, that's gotta be a whole episode in and of itself. But yeah, what, what do you think? Um did did you can he just take advantage of um of, of Fabio's problems or were they genuinely up there all weekend? Oh yeah, look, Fabio would have won easy. Easy. That yep. race. Oh, I that cried race. twice. <laughs> Sorry? I said I cried twice. So, uh, and it was clear for everyone since the practice, since the practice mm. session. Saturday yeah. night, everyone, it was like, wow, tomorrow yep. there Easy. will be two races. One is yep. Fabio. And it happened. I put him in my dream team for double points. I was that sure he was going to win. Yep, me yeah, too. Me all too. of us. All of yep. us. I think my phrase to you, Andrew, was he's welded on for the win. Yeah. I wanted him to win That's... so we could use that photo of him on our cover shot, the one with, oh, the, with the headphones, with headphones and, and no shirt and the <laughs> sparkles. It was like looking in the mirror. It was crazy. <laughs> Sorry, Manuel, please continue. Go on. Yeah. No, no, no. I was saying that it, uh, the script was um, yeah. happening. Until suddenly yep. those arm pumps problems appeared. And mm. this this opened another chapter because after the race, we realized that there were many of them with arm pumps. Many. Yeah. Yeah. Alexis Pargaro on the Ducati, uh, Petrucci on the oh, KTM. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Jack had it the other week and his arm busted open. Jack, and he just, he just had an operation. Yep. Yeah, and Lequona had an operation after yeah. after after Los Ail. So yep. and then obviously the question is what is happening? Yeah. You know, because yep. arm pumps there are always been, but not brrr, all of a sudden I all mean, have arm pumps. I was so right. sure there was something wrong with this bike. I was messaging Stu. I'm like, did you see smoke? I think there's smoke. Must be an engine problem. Something's gone wrong yeah. with his bike. Like, I, yeah, I thought it was an engine Fabio, problem. For, Fabio, for Fabio. He just, he just I kept thought there was an engine issue. Was like, the, the commentators were saying that maybe there's a tire problem, but we were watching him. He was he was full commitment, full lean on corners. It's and something. He was he was getting good traction coming out of the corners. There was no slip. There was clearly not a tire issue. 
And so I was thinking it must be like an engine or electronics issue that's limiting the amount of power he can get out or something. Um, but yeah, wow, arm pump. That's crazy. Arm pump, arm pump. And this is another consequence of the increase of performance of the bike. That's the other yeah. thing, yes. The, the, famous, the famous wings, what do the wings do? The, the wings squeeze the bike to the floor, right? Mm-hmm. And also this whole shot system or this that makes the bike lower when you got on the straight. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, Stu, and you are in the airplane business, you know, with all this uh, weight on the bike to move the bike. You know, More the effort. agility of the bike. Yeah, but tons. It's like having tons of, yeah. of effort to do. They've yes. got to keep it in check, don't they? they can't, it, you can't out-machine the person. That, that's that's a great that's a great point, Andrew. Exactly. You know, going back, it's all related. Everything that you know that, that Mark was saying about about the bikes becoming too fast for for the tracks. It's not just the tracks; the bikes are becoming too fast for mm. the riders. This is the point. And too physical, as well. you know, because mm, one exactly. thing is to be quick, another one is to be physical. They accelerate, as we explained before, much stronger. So you have to really grab on the bike. If you yep. accelerate stronger, you arrive faster at the breaking point. So you mm. have to brake harder. And then the change of direction with all these uh, uh, aerodynamic weight is yep. terrible. I'm it like is. at school, I'm just waiting. Yeah, Andrew, you can the lady at the back has a question. Uh, yes, Mr. Um, McGraw. Is that also why Rossi's struggling? Because he's obviously, he's, he's so bloody close. <laughs> He's Rossi, so... Rossi, 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 Oh, Rossi. I'm just saying, though, Rossi. because... Why because... don't you speak about Lequona or about yeah. uh, Salvadori? Or Who? No. no, but again, he, he's obviously so bloody talented, so it's not like he's he's not good enough, but have the bikes yeah. just evolved that quickly and he's I'll a bit him. older now? Yeah, maybe, maybe. Who knows? Well, Rossi, you know, Rossi, you Rossi. Imagine, imagine a string, Edra, a string. On one side is the age that pushes on that side yeah. to the left and the yeah. other side the performance and this thing is starting to get yeah. <laughs> and then it sounds right. like a violin yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yeah look uh, we, 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 we are going to run out of time soon we don't want to make this thing well, we could talk for three hours i know um but the, yeah. the last i think the last big thing i wanted to to, to pick up on is franco morbidelli again this guy continues to be um, the, the number one finishing Yamaha, like, yes, we know Quattro has had some incredible results, but he's the top Yamaha again. He's on the old chassis. He's on the old bike, the old, the old Yamaha. He's finished way ahead of Vinales. He's finished, you know, way ahead of Rossi, um, as did Rossi, you know, Rossi, probably Rossi. The, the bus driver. Um, <laughs> is it... Is it is it time? I know there's there's no provision to put, put to put Franco on a 2021 bike this year, but uh, but I, I understand that um, I'm going to say the name again. Rossi has come out in the media this week and he said that he did pressure uh, Razlan Razali and the SRT team to put Morbidelli on a 2021 bike and they refused to do so. Um, What's what's this guy? What what's this guy gonna got to do to get on a on a fast? I feel like bike? they're just setting him up for failure. He's got potential. Exactly. He's clearly if he goes got... all this year, is he gonna get another go next year again, or, or what? What's gonna happen? I don't want him to see. I don't want to see him miss out on his chance. I saw Manuel's eyes sparkle. Look, the the story is the following. Um, Morbidelli has the twenty nineteen bike. It's basically yeah. a museum bike, right? The museum. They have the Rona, the Rona from, yeah. yeah, from a museum. I know. Okay. But this is the package he has. And this is the package he will finish the championship. So yeah. there is no issue. Keep on going around. So he knows he has accepted this and it's the best thing he can do. So with this e- equipment, Mor- the championship of Morbidelli is basically an endurance championship. He has to do in every race, the best he can. So he mm-hmm. has not, he can't think going out in a race to think hey, I'm going to win. No, no. His mission is to do the best. So I told him this. I said, uh, Franco, for a rider like you, isn't that frustrating? 
I was about to say that, yes. He finished runner-up in the championship last year, for God's sake. Yeah, but he said to me, look, I have to be consistent. And then I said, but isn't that frustrating for a guy who wants to win the championship? And yep. look at his answer. It, and he told me, well, consistency made Joan Mir champion last year, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Ooh, good perfect. point. Very, very, very <laughs> yeah. valid. Good point. So this is Touché, a positive, Franco. a positive look at the situation. You know, half full, half full. Yeah. Yep. Uh, hey, this this so is cool. how it has to be. Hey, then so they cool. said, I heard voices. No, porque Valentino in the last. Well, look at you talking about Rossi, 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 hey, Rossi, <laughs> Rossi. <laughs> Rossi should should give should give him his uh, 2021 bike. Yes, he People should. Say. That was what it's I was getting possible. at. It's not wow. possible because the engine are frozen and Morbidelli's engine are different. But they're in the same team. Can't they just do that? No, 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 no. No, um, because at a certain point, if they were uh, how many uh, fighting for the championship, the team could give the other rider, you know, yeah. no way. Uh, he will finish oh, yeah, like this. Okay. Forget yeah, the yeah, story. So when you right. hear... Rossi, Rossi, Rossi could uh, give him the bike. <laughs> Nonsense. If he Rossi, could, Rossi, he, he Rossi, would. Rossi, Rossi. Look, look, I tell you something. The other, I was sitting in the press room with the Italian journalists. Yeah. And yeah. after every day, every single day, when does Rossi speak? When does Rossi speak? Ah. And he had finished 15. I, told, I, I looked at them and they said, look, He's guys. not even here. <laughs> the, re the reality of your motor of your racing is a guy called Peco Bagnaia. Yep. The reality of your uh, racing is a guy called Franco Mer Morbidelli. And yep. you keep, when Rossi finishes 17th, did you hear yep. Rossi speaking? Did you? Come on. And then the following right. day, the headlines of the sport, of the sport magazine in Italy, Rossi, what is happening? And the other guy has finished on pole. Really? He's finished on... Oh, my God. That's really? crazy. Rossi, okay. Rossi, Rossi, Rossi. All right. Yep. You, you, you convinced me. That's enough, Rossi. There's Let's our next promo. Paco. There's our next yeah. promo video. <laughs> Rossi, Rossi, Rossi. <laughs> hey, can I have that as my ringtone? <laughs> That's going to be my next ringtone. Yes. Is Manuel going, Rossi, <laughs> Rossi, Rossi. Rossi. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Now, let's talk about Peko. He's, he is now the world championship leader. He's, he's up there. Um... What do you reckon, man? Well, well deserved, consistent performances. Is, is, Yo, is look, he really the, a serious threat? The interesting thing uh, in Jerez was that we had these two guys you have behind you. We did, they did one second. Ducati on a track that historically was a problem for them. Hmm. And with completely two riding styles, you know, yeah. aggressive uh, Jack, heartbreaker. Start, uh, harsh accelerating mm -hmm. while uh, Peko is the opposite, smooth like butter, you know? Mm, yeah. So this means one, that Dalinas was right when he criticized Dovizioso, in my opinion, because Ducati, Ducati for years have been in the hands of Dovizioso. It was yep. when Dovizioso was fast, the bike was good. When he was slow, the bike was not good. Now, with this rider, they have shown that maybe it wasn't the bike. Yeah. Because they kept saying, wasn't it? It wasn't a Ducati track. Ducati haven't won on that track for however many years. And yep. It's got too like, many oh. little dinky, rinky dink corners. The straight yeah, isn't that look, long. Yep. Look, where, the people where, has, where? The, no, the people have very um, short memory. Jorge Lorenzo, in his first year on Ducati, that was, he did podium in his third or fourth race in Jerez with the Ducati. Mm -hmm. The following year, remember, he crashed with Dovizioso and Pedrosa when they were riding for second. Oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> okay. So at the end, really, uh, Dovizioso did a great job, won a uh, lot of races, but Dovizioso is very square-headed. So when he had an idea, he did just stick on it and no, 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 no. And Dalinia has shown that his bikes weren't that bad in Jerez. Yep. Yeah, indeed. So that's good. So it's so so seriously the the Ducati is going to be. Would you put it that? Well, I'm not saying a, a particular rider, but the Ducati bike itself. Would you say that's the favourite for the championship this year? 
No, the, we, we have seen, Stu, very clearly that the Yamahas, the Yamahas would have won the four races yeah. if mm -hmm. they would not have this arm pump problem. So it's clear that there are two bikes in front. Mm -hmm. One is the Ducati and one is the Yamaha. And the Yamaha. Then immediately behind, we have the Suzuki, but they have an idiot a rider like Rins who crashes <laughs> in the second turn. I, I, I wanted to get to that. Like, seriously, and for me, it's normal the second turn, And then does he does the race lap record. Yep. Yes. Hang on. Yep. Hang on. Yep. I had all these people messaging me going, I'm so surprised Rins crashed. This was the crash the other way. And I was like, no, no, this is normal. Just, tell just, just him, wait, tell, wait and tell see. Him. And then he did it again Ooh. this week. I'm like, see, I told you. <laughs> Next time, tell them to call me. I will. <laughs> In two minutes, they, they will yeah. see. They will understand the reality. Exactly, yeah. For, for me, no, he's got nothing. But uh, Juan Mir, um, good performance. Couldn't make it onto the podium. Uh, but a, a solid performance for him. Mm -hmm. uh, I think similar to last year, he's starting to pick up the, the, the results. He's just generating points, doing the same thing. Um, so, yeah, maybe maybe he, he might start to put, put some good performances in. Maverick Vinales. Oh, seriously, the, the guy's a clown. Like, what, what is he doing? He, he can have such an incredible performance one week. And then next, he, no. he does this. Like, Stu, like, he, he's the, cha the world champion or Saturday's world champion. Yeah, exactly. Then, Saturday's world champion, yes. And then he arrives on Sunday, and when you th there comes out the list of the tires, the tire list. Mm. And he all, pa, 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 and suddenly point <laughs> one rider who is choosing <laughs> a tire that no other one chooses. Yeah. So, so then he has degrees have gone soft. What? <laughs> Then he has the perfect excuse. My tire is yep. not working. Yep. <laughs> Do you know what he is? He's a peanut. He is a peanut. He's a he peanut. is a complete peanut. Yeah, definitely. We, we were what? hoping. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a, that means he's a bit uh, in the head in Australian. Um, we were hoping at the beginning of the year that he'd he'd matured just that little bit and he was listening to the advice Practicing of those around him. Practicing his starts. He did 101 laps at testing exactly. on the weekend. He did 101 laps in no, testing. On Monday, yeah, 100, uh, sh he should have done 20 during the weekend, but the the, <laughs> the, 20, the 25 of the race. They were 25 that matters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we don't exactly. care about the 101. No, but yeah. Look, I am so disappointed that he has the speed. We know it. Yeah. Oh, he, he might win next week. He might but do. then, ah, look, oh, yeah, Le Mans. Le Mans is a good track for Valentino. Valentino, Valentino. <laughs> Hang on, before, before, good... we, before we go there, before we go, ah, okay. I do want to talk about Le Mans, but just very quickly, just finally, I just want to mention Alicia Spargo and Aprilia. Again, finish sixth, another consistent performance from them. That bike is bloody good. That bike is fantastic. Are they, who are they going to get on that bike next year? It's either going to be Dovi or it's going to be who from Moto Two we were just talking about. Well, if they, um, if they take Digia, uh, sorry, no, Digia, Digia, yeah, yeah. yeah but so it that... would be for me. It would Ooh. be a mistake, horrible mistake, you know, to get a because uh, Alej needs somebody who pushes him, right? Yeah, he's riding amazing. Because again, we are in the same situation as Paul. Is he? Yeah. Fast? Can this bike be faster? Or... Yeah. Who knows? That's right. You know that so, uh, next next week, 11th and 12th of May, mm -hmm. uh, Dovizioso is going to test again the Aprilia in Mugello. Ooh, a Mugello. That will be interesting. Yeah. That will be very good. Okay. I wouldn't mind betting he'll be on that bike next year. Andra? Oh, I've, I doing? was getting a bit, a little bit terrified that Stu's going to forget about Jack Miller. No, no, not oh. at all. Not, 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 not. This is, you, you're uh, counting like, down, you're like, one more person. I'm like, no. Yeah. No. Let's talk no, about, we've, we've got let's, to. We'll, let's talk about Rossi. <laughs> Rossi, <laughs> Rossi, Rossi. <laughs> let's talk about the legend, the man himself. Rossi. No, Jack Miller. <laughs> <laughs> Jack. Yeah. Jack. What, a, what a ride. Consistent, um, just, just rode within himself. And what a, what a performance. He's, uh, have you? Have you heard of a guy called Stephen Bradbury, Manuel? 
So in the Olympics, I, <laughs> Andrew's pissing herself already. It's, in the Olympics 15, 20 years ago, the Winter Olympics, there was a speed skater from Australia. Who was yes, shit. Many, it was shit. Many people go, ice skating, you immediately <laughs> think of Australia, correct? Yes. Yeah, no. yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. So there was this guy from Australia who was a, an ice skater, a speed skater, Stephen Bradbury. He was shit. He knew he was going to be shit and he knew he was going to be last, but somehow he made it through to the final um, in, the, in, the, in the speed skating. And so he just went around and around and around. He was like a lap behind everybody. What? And then on like, he was literally a lap behind everybody. And then on the last lap, the guy who was in the lead fell over and took out all the other guys in the race. And he like just went straight past them. In, they were in a, in a massive hit. And he literally just went over the line. As he went over the line, he went, and one goal. I won. I won. Oh my god! So, to a lesser extent, you know, Fabio was out front. He's giving it, giving it some of this, and, and he's he's banging in all these amazing lap times, like one thirty sevens or whatever. Um, and Jack's just like, I'm just going to sit behind him. I'm just going to sit behind him. And then all of a sudden, Fabio's gone. Oh, my arm hurts, <laughs> and he's two seconds a lap slower. And Jack's just gone. Thanks for coming. I'm Stephen Bradbury. Jack didn't get any quicker. <laughs> through the race he just maintained the same pace he just kept doing what he was doing like a good little aussie good little train and he won that bloody race what a legend performance yeah yeah and but- the the best the best the race was normal as you said but the best came after you know the oh, emotion the emotion the, emotion. the, pre- the press conference no, no, no. The best moment of Jack Miller and everybody, please go back and watch this on the podium. He has the skull of his Prosecco. And just before they start the anthem, he lets out the biggest burp and they yeah. catch it on the microphone. Uh, <laughs> Manuel, it's hilarious. <laughs> it was amazing. And he sung the, the, the Aussie national anthem and I, I was watching his lips. He got the words wrong. He did. So he, <laughs> did you notice that as well? Yeah. He said with golden soil. He got oil and soil wrong. Yeah, that's right. Never mind. Never mind. But it was it was it was incredible. The emotion's amazing. Can we put in the little video of him burping? I know it's inappropriate, but it's so Aussie and so good. Yeah, we'll see if we can throw it in. We'll see. We'll throw it. We'll throw it in now. This could be the key now for his world championship to now move on. He's got that off his back finally. He's won in Ducati colours. Can he now take it to the next level? There we go. Yeah, there it was. We'll, we'll put it in there. Indeed. Yeah, no, it was fantastic. But it is good, isn't it, Manuel, to see a first-time winner. I know he's not really a first-time winner, but um, you know, he, he won in Aspen in 2016. But that was that was very much an anomaly when, when he was with the Australia Galithia team in the wet race there. Um, but yeah, this this was his first real win. And yeah. it's it, it lets off the pressure that he was under. There was all this expectation from Ducati. And after those first three races, it was like, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. And now he's just gone bang. Yeah. It was- yes, as you say, this is a very good point. He got liberated, you know. He's free of all this pressure. Now he will race in a different mode. I am completely 100% sure. And you could see it. It was just like when yeah. he was sitting there crying, it was like just yes, let it all I just fell it. off his shoulders. It, you know? He wasn't Amazing. faking it. No, that, that was that, real. That was, yeah, that was real. That was as now, real as you're ever he, he will walk into the the garage in a different way. You mm-hmm. know? Yes, he will look. He'll be at two foot taller. Teammate. Yeah, make him what five foot. And he will <laughs> feel that the team respects him more. Yeah, he will feel yes. that Ducati uh, Tifosi feel worthy. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's yeah. good. Now let's see. Let's see how you know the. He will have a super important race in one month time. Remember, now yes. next week uh, we are going to France, and then <gasps> comes. Do you want to say how Mugello. far I've come? Do you want to say how well, far I've come? So go- we are going to Le Mans. Le Mans. Le Mans. <laughs> Le Mans. <laughs> Not going to Le Mans. Uh, Stu, do All you right. have to recover? You have to recover Le Mans one year ago. Le Mans. Yes. Yeah, we do. Yeah. I work. I work ah, with the French now. 
I'm, pra- I'm practically fluent. One of them yeah. walked past today and said something to me in French, and I just went, "Oh, we?" Oui? And I was like, "See, I'm practically fluent." <laughs> Man, <laughs> yes, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you've you've got the Mugello race um, at, at the at the end of the month. That's that's gonna be. That will be huge. the race. Imagine last year Petrucci won. The other year Dovizioso won twice. So it mm-hmm. will be the big fiesta with two riders. The one you have in, in, on on yep. your back. They have. They are on a mission to repeat the the, the victory in Mugello. That will be nice. Indeed. Indeed. And I will so, be there. Are you you going to Mugello? Of course, <laughs> I w- I am thinking in riding a uh, Moto Guzzi. Did I tell you? Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because this year is the hundredth anniversary of Moto Guzzi. Yep. The problem is that from Madrid to Mugello, it will be around two thousand k's. Lucky you like riding. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> <and a> half, <laughs> <laughs> so I am considering going by bike or not. I have to. Convince myself first. Right. Crazy. Maybe maybe fly into um, maybe fly into Milan, and then get the bike in Milan and and, and ride. Ah, he's on ah, it. So this this is thinking. a little bit. This is a chicken. This is not a real bike. Yeah. This is a chicken biker. <laughs> yeah, but nobody knows. <laughs> fly, fly, Kentucky fried chicken rider. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so let's 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 move forwards very quickly. Uh, we've got Le Mans. We've got we've got, we've got this weekend off, and then we and then we move move forward to Le Mans. Um, so what are we thinking? What kind of racetrack? What kind of circuit is Le Mans? Which bikes are suited? It's got it's got a long straight. Um, so yeah, who, no, who, who are we look, thinking? If Keres was called small, old-fashioned yeah. track, yep. Le Mans is on the same level, right? Uh, normally, the Yamahas are good there. Mm-hmm. The Yamaha would, because it's a twisty track, we will see. I yep. would, because look at, this, at the situation. Fabio Quartararo will be uh, have done his arm this uh, yesterday. He he went right. to yes, France to make surgery, and yep. Fabio is arriving at his home sir race. Yep. Oh, Zarco, yes. Fabio, imagine the pressure they have, and imagine yeah, Fabio yeah. having having been the big favorite in all the races so far. He won mm-hmm. last year, didn't he? He won last year. No, Patricia won last oh, year. No, no. Oh, I thought he won at his home. No. No, and that was where Mark has got on the podium. And Zarko also will be, so it will be an interesting race. Yeah. But yeah. Well, all of yeah. them are. It's just us that we are completely hooked on that. So for us, yes. yeah. I'm trying to plan a trip to Western Australia to meet my baby niece. And I'll keep free. I had I was meant to be there now, but because they had some cases I postponed. But I'm like, I can't go on a weekend when there's races. But I said to my yeah, husband, sorry. Oh, but Can't I was like, but if I'm over there, I'm gonna I'm watching the race. I don't give a shit who's there. And if we're recording the podcast, well, I'm recording the podcast. See what's become my priorities. Oh, don't worry. Next week when we when we record, I will be in new in a hotel room in New Zealand. What? Wow. Yeah. I will I'm, I've got a I've got a, a work trip. Oh, you so poor thing. Are you okay? Yeah. Oh, 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 How are you gonna cope? Well is me. I don't know. <laughs> So, okay, yes. but look, I, I think we should uh, consider to do a special VR46. Yep. Podcast. I think so. There's, there's a Rossi. lot to talk about. You know that, yeah, the, yeah. the team that has been announced, the mm-hmm. VR46 the sponsorship. Team, and I have a lot of good reserved Next. information. Next nice. week. Okay. Let's let's do that. So, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it here first. So sometime in the next few weeks, Keep an eye on those notifications from uh, from the Pacino report because uh, I know you've, you've you've hit the bell for notifications. Uh, there will be a VR forty six special coming out soon. You've heard it from the man himself there, um, boss. Before we head off and I go and have my uh, my spaghetti bolognese, um, is is there is <laughs> that, there anything is that, else that place that, that Remy went to? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that place that Remy went to. Bo- bolognese. <laughs> Any other any other key points that you think we might have missed talking about on the weekend, or uh, can I go and have my dinner? No, no, go ahead because there is nothing worse than uh, cold pasta. You know, 
Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Andrew, do you have some uh, do you have some words for the viewers and the listeners out there in, uh, in in digital I land? Do of course I do. I want to give a shout out to Hayden and Komal, my new bestie in Mumbai. She's been I don't know if I spoke about her the other week. She does up a sheet every week. I'll have yeah. to ask her if we can share one actually with all the data. She's she's a bloody legend. She's helping to teach me and she's teaching me about um, Indian traditional dress. Oh, nice. Yes. But yeah, so she's one of Yash's mates. So yeah, we've been having lots of chats. Um, Also, I was on the virtual wall for the MotoGP for the race on Sunday. (laughs) Yeah, Manuel, you were saying there was no crowd there, but there was a virtual (laughs) crowd and the Pacino report was representing. Oh, so funny. It was real. Yes. I just it must have popped up on my email and I went, yeah, I'll chuck in. And it was like the first 300 people. And then next minute I was like, you're in. And I'm like, what do you mean? It's like 10 o'clock at night. I don't have a bra on. So I had to like quickly get my <laughs> had to put my, my bra. On. <laughs> I, I was going to hey, I I see because they they'd give you like it was pretty much going live. So I was like, if I flash my yep. boobs, are they gonna have time to cut they it? Can't stop it. But my husband was sitting next to me on the lounge. I don't think he would I would if I'd had more drinks, I'd do it. <laughs> Anyway, ah, ah, um, third one. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was good fun, but you have to sit and wave for like 30 seconds. It gets really yeah. <laughs> nah, it was, psychotic. It was good fun. It was lots of fun. And there was lots of Rossi fans on there, by the way. If you look at yeah. there was one Fabio Rossi, fan. Rossi. It was so. Even in like twenty, thirty years, when he's no longer around, <laughs> they're all gonna they're all gonna still be there. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Jump on the socials. We're getting all over Twitter now. I'm having a lot of fun during the race weekend yes. on Twitter. <laughs> so we're gonna, Stu, we've got to get you on there too so you can yeah. help out. Use people. <laughs> yes. Um, Instagram, watch us on YouTube, listen to us on any of your favorite podcasts. Please subscribe, like, share with your friends. We should start up a little song that tells all this information. Exactly. And I think For that's sure. everything. Just hit record. Indeed. And Manuel, um, any any cool stories coming up on PacinoGP.com this uh, this month? This month, this week, yes. I have, uh, as I tell you, I'm starting to write the Valentino story with all the mm-hmm. different, you know, there are so many complicated, it's like geopolitics, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and then United another, Nations. Yeah, other stuff that I don't remember. There are so many things. There's nothing more important than Rossi. Exactly. Rossi, Rossi. (laughs) (laughs) But that's it. Get yourself over to PacinoGP.com or PacinoGP.es. If you're you're in Spanish, definitely. Vamos. And uh, we will see you. um, Are we going to record next week? I think. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, we'll yeah, 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 yeah. We have to yeah. do Rossi. We have to do Rossi. We have to yeah, do we'll Rossi. we'll have a chat next week. We'll talk. We'll talk about Rossi. Um, you'll see us here next week. And um, before we go, we've got we've got Le Mans coming up. So um, yeah, get yourself into into MotoGP.com as well, and go and go and check those guys out for all of all of where you can where you can view the the races coming up. Um, and we will see you again in a week's time. Me from New Zealand, him from Spain, and her from Adelaide, Australia. Take it easy, guys. Or or maybe from France. Maybe from France. Who knows? Oui, oui, baguette.